Welcome to The Vault, where we reveal some of the best kept secrets for success. Our show is designed to introduce you to industry professionals in TV, movies, music, sports, and business. Now our goal is to learn from a wealth of information and use it to realize your dreams. All right, guys, welcome to The Vault, where all the secrets are kept. And we have an amazing guest on right now by the name of Carlo Riley, who is a Michael Jackson tribute artist. And we are so happy to have you on here. Um, we want to talk to you a little bit about what made you choose to be a Michael Jackson tribute artist. Um, well, as you know, I'm like a, a huge Michael Jackson fan as, as an understatement reference. Um, but about, let's see here, maybe 14 years ago on Halloween, since I know they play Thriller back to back over and over on Halloween. I decided, uh, since I know the dance, I was like, you know what? This year I'm going to be Michael for Halloween. And uh, sure enough, I dressed as Michael. And I was actually impressed. The costume shop uh, said, wow, when I put on a specific wig. They were like, wow, you really look like Michael. And, of course, I just laughed it off. But then when they played Thriller around midnight for the costume contest in Denver, Colorado, uh, I did Thriller and everyone was like screaming like it was like Michael, like he was back. And that was right in the middle of all the court trials. And so there wasn't anything good on Michael. It was just all negative. So I had like a huge uh, excitement piece that came from it. And then when the costume contest ended, they asked the crowd like who wins? And the whole audience was like, my goal, my goal, my yeah. goal. Yeah. And, uh, that's how I, I won the, the prize. And then I ran with it from there once I realized I had an audience uh, with a, a good reception of that. So tell me what that, that brings up another great point is how do the fans receive you when they see you in uh, as Michael Jackson? Sure. What is, like? um, what is that like? Yeah. So for the most part, everyone's very receptive when they see me. They're really excited to see me. And uh, I'm honored that a lot of the people have already seen my work. They'll say, what's your name? And I'll tell them and they'll say, oh, I know who you are. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, that's so amazing that someone knows who I am just through the Michael Jackson fan world. Um, but the best awards are given by his family when they've seen or met me. I've met all of his family, including his mother and father and children. And um, the facial reactions I get from them are the most profound to me, even if they never go on record, say anything about me, just the way they react to me says it all. And uh, I couldn't ask for a, a better award for that. Just the way they've viewed me, uh, especially his mother who asked to meet me. And uh, she started to cry when I actually started the chapter. So that was a, a huge piece for me that I'm more than honored to have been involved in. Or been in a lifetime that it's possible. What what did his mother say to you? Well, uh, initially, I, I heard that she was at the event. And this was in Gary, Indiana. And um, I was right at the family's house. But I knew that they were going to be there. So I didn't want to upset any of the family members. So I left the area. And I was like a block away. And one of her security guards came to see me. And he said, Miss Jackson would like to meet you and take a picture. And it was like, no way, that's crazy. Like, no way is that even possible. And sure enough, he brought me backstage to the area where her bus was at. And it took a few minutes, and she met some children first, but she saw me. And at first, she smiled. She was happy to see me. Uh, I think it reminded her of Michael. But then as I approached her, she got uh, very upset. And she's like, you're going to make me cry. And uh, she started to cry. So I just kissed her hand and I was like, okay, well, very nice to meet you. I love your family. Bye. You know, I just wanted to end it. I didn't want to make it upsetting for her. 
But I've heard in interviews that she likes Michael lookalike uh, impersonators. She knows that they love him and she likes to see it. So I don't feel bad now that I've heard all of the, the stories on it. So what was it like to meet Michael? I heard that you have an amazing story of, of how that all played out. Let me know. On the day I was set to meet Michael, I thought something would fall apart and not allow it to happen. I thought maybe he wouldn't show up or even though I saw on in the international news that he arrived in Japan, which was obviously a huge deal. Um, I wasn't sure if he would actually come to the event. So I was almost convinced myself that something would fall apart and it wouldn't work out. But nonetheless, um, the day of I got ready and I was very tired because I was on Japanese time and I'm from the USA. So I, uh, when it time came time to get ready, I was really tired. But at the same time, I knew I was like, okay, well, like in four hours, I'm going to meet Michael, which didn't even seem realistic. Like this, I my body literally went into shock mode. This isn't something a normal human can deal with, knowing that that's on their schedule. So I got ready. I went to the event. It was hard to catch a cab, uh, believe it or not. Even though I was dressed like Michael, <laughs> a lot of cab drivers didn't want to deal with that. They're very conservative, I guess. And uh, from that moment, they dropped me off. As soon as I got there, the worldwide press was there. So CNN, ABC, NBC, Fox, all of them were there. And they actually thought I was Michael when I first got there. Because I was wearing a surgical mask. And I was wearing actually the last thing he wore in Japan. And then from there, I was standing in line. I was one of 300 guests. I was number 14 of 300 guests that got to meet Michael. So it's kind of like a little kid getting to stand in line to meet Santa Claus. And uh, again, it was very surreal. I didn't believe it was happening. Everyone went in, you know, just smiling. A normal person came out screaming and crying and dirty nose coming out, like, because they were so overtaken by meeting Michael. That it was like a shock. I'm like, what is going to happen in this room when I meet it? I, because these people are going from sane to like crazy chaotic, like full on panic mode, like anxiety attack. Um, and then when I, I I stepped in the room with him, I heard his real voice briefly. So his real voice is very actually pretty normal. It's not like very high, strong, like you always hear him in because that's his character. He doesn't do that in public, but when he's just around his security or something, then uh, then it's no problem. And I heard that briefly. He was laughing about the last person that was in the room with him, who was crying and like dirty nose and screaming and having a seizure. And um, I went in there and I tapped him on the shoulder because I heard his normal voice. And then he didn't know I was in the room. As soon as I tapped him on the shoulder, he changed. His whole persona changed because he knew a fan was in the room. And uh, he looked at me like up and down, like, and he goes, where are you from? And like, as soon as him asking me a question came to play, I didn't even know where I was from. <laughs> like I, I was, I literally had to think about it. I was like, um, Denver, Colorado, USA. Like very questionable because I didn't, it was so weird to have him gazing at me and looking at examining my costume because I'm, I'm trying to wear the same thing he is. So as an artist, that would be like seeing a counterfeit painting. You know, he's going to be looking at all the things that are different. Um, I wasn't intimidated by that, but it was awkward to have him literally examining me as far as that's concerned. And uh, then he asked me my name. And I, again, I forgot. I was like, uh, Carlo Riley. And uh, he just looked at me again, and I only saw him like this. He looked through the sunglasses because his uh, the sunglasses are so dark, you can't really see through them. And then I asked him for a hug and an autograph, and his security guard got really angry about me asking for uh, an autograph. And uh, Michael motioned for a pen. He went like this, like, pen? And I didn't have a pen. And then the security guards hands him one, like, out of his uh, chest jacket. 
and hands it to Michael, and he just rolled his eyes. He was like, oh. he was so irritated that I asked for it. And then he signed my ticket in Michael's palm, love Michael Jackson. And then uh, part of the, the piece from the system, you got an, uh, an 8 by 10 autographed photo of Michael. But they hadn't given it to me yet. So I was like, oh, where's the uh, autographed 8 by 10 And they're like, you just got his autograph. And I'm like, oh, yeah, no, the one that comes with it. And they go, you get that outside. <sighs> and, like, all the security was so mad that I asked about it. And then as soon as I came out, CNN and AC and Fox and everyone was like, what did he say to you? Like, there was just, like, hundreds of people asking me what uh, Michael had said to me which is super interesting. Again, uh, I'm a pretty normal person, so to have that kind of attention is crazy. So lead me through, now that you got to meet Michael and then you've you know, gotten to meet his family, lead me through the day that Michael Jackson died and then also the, the memorial that they had in Los Angeles. Give me the, the shorter version. Yeah, the short version on that, um, I was at work when on June 25th. And I was actually in a meeting that was going on for hours. It was really boring. So I kept Googling Mike, which is something I used to do to see where he would turn up. Because he would pop up in the Middle East. Then all of a sudden he's in Ireland. And then he's in the USA. Like, So it would be like a kind of a game to catch him where he was at. Because he'd always get international press. But for some reason, the internet service was down in my building. So I kept Googling Michael and nothing came up. But then I, I had a meeting to attend. So I, I left. and. One of my close friends called me and I answered because no one has given my number, which is amazing. <laughs> and he was like, is it true about Michael? I was like, what? And he's like, they said he died. And I was like, no, that's stupid. Like, they always say stuff like that about him. He's like, no, I think it's serious. It's on CNN. And, and I was like, no, that's not true. But like, thanks for calling me. Hung up. Right after that, I got like 50 text messages from all over the world of people saying, is it true? And I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, this is crazy. And then I turn on my car and uh, the radio station it was on said, and this is in tribute to Michael Jackson and started playing one of his songs. And I was like, no way, this is crazy. Cause I was going to London like a week from then to go to one of his shows. And then more and more text messages, more and more calls. Everyone is like, no, I think this is serious, man. Like this really happens. And TMZ was the only one to confirm it. But then, the, you know, they're tabloids. So I didn't think, I was like, well, maybe that's not true. But then once everyone else confirmed it, it was horrible for me. Because, um, like, I'm a big fan of his, like, besides what I do. So, like, it was like Superman died. And uh, then everyone I know knows I'm, like, so in love with Michael. So everyone called me for any number I have that they have. New means like friends from 20 years ago are calling other friends of mine 10 years ago. Like everyone wants to know, like, how is Carla doing? And uh, truth be told, uh, one of the gifts of being a Michael Jackson fan is they immediately went to praise with him right away. So when he died, I was I got asked to perform all over the world, like Australia. Dubai, Canada, you know, Middle East, anywhere, South America. So, like, I was so busy, I didn't even have time to mourn his death. And to this day, it was only, like, the first couple hours when he died that I was upset, but then all of a sudden I was overwhelmed with people trying to pay tribute to him to use me in some fashion. So I don't know if that's just a delayed reaction, and it'll come back someday to haunt me, but... uh that's the way it went down. So let's segue over to, um, you know, now that you tour the world as uh, Michael Jackson and your website is almost MJ, tell us about that life. I mean, you're almost like, like you had mentioned the death of Superman, uh, kind of like with Michael Jackson, you have a Clark Kent life and you have a, you know, a Superman life, so to speak. You have a dual life. So talk about your day-to-day -day life versus when you are Michael Jackson. Oh, uh, sure. Yeah. So uh, for those of you guys who don't uh, know, me and uh, Alex are, are friends on the side. So we, he actually kind of knows my personal life. I'm a software salesman. 
So extremely long story short, I sell software to small and medium-sized businesses. I meet them in person. Uh, I also do a lot of webinars. Uh, very few of my clients actually know what I do as Michael. Every now and then, one of their um, assistants will find out, they'll Google my name before the meeting, and the manager will say, are you this Michael Jackson guy? Uh -huh. And um, <laughs> I always just laugh, and I'm like, uh, what do you think? <laughs> and they're like, no. And I'm like, okay, then, that's fine. <laughs> and they're like, well, are you or not? I was like, I am. But I keep that private because I don't want I don't want to lose credibility in my industry. Mm -hmm. Because if I'm like Michael Jackson, why would I know anything about software? As far <laughs> as those concerned. And Michael trumps any conversation, no matter what. Believe it or not, I've been in corporate clothes forever. As soon as anyone finds out I met Michael, it the whole meeting turns into what I met him, what he said, when was it, what's my favorite song. And I don't regret it. It's amazing as a salesperson to be attributed to an international pop star that comes up in conversation daily on a global scale. You know, I get a lot of business from that because people like to say, oh, I, yeah, I deal with this guy. He's Michael Jackson. <laughs> and they show my website. And it's crazy. I've got weird business from that. Uh, it's fun. At the same time, it has nothing to do with what I do on a normal day basis. So even though it's become a big part of everything I do, it, uh, it doesn't really come to play. Tell me about the fan experience. Like, I know that you, you get the fans, but then you get the super fans, too. And tell me what that's like. And, and, and then the, the benefit is you can actually, like, become unfamous again and, and then live your regular life. Tell me, like, how sure. – some give me some war stories of the super fans with you. Sure. So um, super fans, I would describe as people showing up to my home unannounced. And I don't use my legal name on any paperwork for that reason, because I don't want anyone to find out my personal life. It's just not what I do. Um, I'm not Michael. I don't perform as Michael. I'm not looking like him every day. I'm very clear about that. Uh, when I do, I announce it, but I'm not. It's a, a different life. But nonetheless, I've had people that have investigated and somehow found out my information um, and showed up at my home from across the world uh, very mad that I wasn't in character wearing, you know, the Billie Jean jacket and the glove. They expected that I was ready to take a bunch of pictures with them, and do live, you know, Facebook to prove that we're friends. And I understand why people do that because I'm a fan of Michael. And like, if he was still around, I'd probably try to do something like that. But I'm not him. I never will be him. I could never even be close to that by any means. But I understand it. So I'm not complaining. Um, it just comes with what I do. So even though it's very uh, kind of scary to have random people that don't even speak English show up at your house, <laughs> demanding a lot for the thousands of dollars that they just spent to come see you. Wow. Um, I still try to give them something, you know, since they're looking up to me as, as Michael. I'm like, I try to give them something that would uh, give them something on that. Uh, and... But it's interesting, and it's gotten worse. The longer he's gone, the more people are clinging to anything that's around. And I have a lot of things that uh, people would be interested in. As I told uh, you before, I have some of his clothing. I have a mold of his body. I have a 3D hologram of him. So people are like grasping at straws to grab a connection to Michael. And I have the closest possible physical pieces that anyone could ever even dream of. So it's as a normal person, it's hard to... Uh, keep all that and then just go to work every day and act like none of that world exists. So Mike, I know I already know this too, but I, I know that you save a lot of the money that you make to buy memorabilia and props and wardrobe. I mean, how much would you say you've spent on Michael Jackson memorabilia? <laughs> Honestly, I never even measure the dollar. I mean, it's in the tens of thousands of dollars, which is funny because a lot of people would assume that I'm rich because that's so much money. But uh, any money I make on Michael, I just throw right back into him. So whether I'm buying a pair of socks, a pair of underwear, a hologram of him, a drink he, you know, a cup that he drank from, anything like that. Um, I'm interested in any connection I can get gathered to him. I don't care about having a home or like a really nice car. I don't care about any of that. I'm not trying to flash that I have a lot of stuff. Um, but if there's anything physically tangible, pertaining to Michael that still exists on Earth, 
this is spectacular as far as I'm concerned. And I'm going to pursue every avenue to at least touch it for a second of being present. Because believe it or not, you guys are in a lifetime where this is all still possible. But down the line, people will realize who he was and will be grasping at any piece of bacteria that existed around the same time. So eventually you'll understand what I'm saying. I'm sure right now you probably think I'm a crazy person. But trust me, I have my head screwed on straight. Well, we have some time left. I want you to go over the film that you were in where you portrayed Michael Jackson that just recently won some awards. Oh, sure. Yeah, so the film I was in uh, that I started in Cairo, Egypt, is called Sheikh Jackson. It's S-H-E-I-K-H Jackson. It tells uh, a Muslim's tale of being a Michael Jackson fan and fighting because it's not allowed in their culture to idolize. Uh, same thing with Christianity. You're not allowed to idolize anyone. And Michael's considered an idol. And uh, But he is actually due that uh, just title as far as I'm concerned. But nonetheless, this film in Egypt explains uh, someone who's extremely religious being a Michael Jackson fan who's younger. And then that part spilling out into his normal life later on after he hears about Michael dying. Uh, and it's an amazing piece. I'm so proud that I live in a lifetime that I would even be considered to portray him because even a year from now, even right now, if anyone was to try to portray Michael, it would all be CGI. And then it, it wouldn't be a real actor. So the fact that I got cast to perform as him in uh, the motherland uh, of Egypt, I was uh, more than happy. And it was actually up for an Oscar here in the USA as best wow. foreign film. That's, that's really amazing. And it was also... Yeah, it's it's going to be on Netflix pretty soon. It's, someone leaked it on uh, YouTube, and then it's going to be on... Uh, it's on Comcast now as well, but don't pay for it. It'll be on Netflix pretty soon. <laughs> okay. Uh, do you by chance have any uh, cool memorabilia that you could show us while we're on, the, on with you right now? Yeah. Yeah, I have a few things. So here's... Uh, What is that? That's uh, the mold I'm working on of Michael that I'm turning him into a robot. Wow. How, how, uh, how did you get that? I bought the molds of his body from a, a makeup studio that went out of business. Okay, what else you got? What is this that? Is a piece of his. A piece of him? One of his costumes from Dancing Machine with some rhinestones. Oh, okay. Okay, hold on. I got a whole bunch of stuff. Everyone everyone here in the studio is like all of a sudden perked up. They're like sitting closer. They want to see what all this is. Can you see the... The photo? The pink? No, this is uh, the rabbit. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So tell me what this is. This is from uh, Bill, um, no, Will Vinton. He made the Speed Demon uh, and all the California Raisins stuff. This is an original from Moonwalker. Wow. And I have a whole other story about that. I've actually seen it in a paranormal universe. But uh, here's another little side piece. Can you see that? Yeah, what is that? That's uh, Artist of the Decade Award signed by Michael. Oh, that's the real one? Yeah. And then here's one of his fedoras. What is that? Oh, oh, very cool. One of his hats. Yeah. And then I got. Hold on. Boxer shorts. <laughs> okay. From his assistant. <laughs> All right. Let's go. And on. I don't even care about this. It just didn't sell for much. And I want his robot wearing like his real clothes. So know. whether you can't even see it or not, I want to be able to say like, oh yeah, head to toe, this is him. True authenticity. Huh? Yeah. Is that, what is that? Just what is plain that? socks, okay. Yeah, show, just plain socks. Show me and again, you'll never even see that. Show me, uh, do you have the hologram there? No, not set up. I can show you a miniature one though. All right, show me that. 
I don't know if you can see. So what is this? What are we looking at? It's a hologram of Michael comprised of three images. Uh, you have to see it in a specific spotlight to see it, but I actually have a life-size one of this with 360 different images. And it's the closest thing to anyone in the world will ever come to meeting the real Michael Jackson. He stares at you in person and smiles. Oh, it, no matter happened, uh, when you move, his head moves like this, right? Yeah. Yeah, his whole head and expression. So you never lose eye contact with him. That's the whole point. And uh, people are going to freak out, whether even Michael fans or not, because it's a virtual person that doesn't exist on Earth anymore. But your brain perceives this to be real. So when you see it, it's like, how can it not be real? It makes you question like, uh, what's really going on as far as physical dimensions. And on top of that, when I display it, I have his perfume in the air. And then I play his uh, laughter, which is set on a, a motion sensor. So as you walk by, he starts to laugh as he's looking at you. And then you smell his perfume like really strong. Wow. Okay. I got a couple of questions. Let's, let's, first of all, let's open it up to our audience. Let's see what uh, questions they come up with. I want to see sure. what questions you guys have for Carlo Riley, who is a Michael Jackson tribute artist. And he's telling us about all his, uh, you know, great experiences with Michael Jackson, the Jackson family, as well as, you know, showing us, a lot of his personal memorabilia of Michael Jackson. So let's go with our first question. Anyone out there? We're just getting a lot of hearts right now. That's good. <laughs> see that too. How much was the hologram? Um, <laughs> a lot of money to the point where I'm still paying it off to this day. So are, but, we, are we talking tens of thousands? Yeah, tens of thousands of dollars. Yeah. But I'll, I'll tell you this. Um, I had no clue the power of Michael because that's what actually helped me get it. I didn't have enough to buy it outright. But I explained to this uh, person who had it who I am. And um, even though my credit report doesn't back it up, he understood that I have a channel into the Michael community. And I explained that I wanted this piece for them. It's not for myself. It's for them. And it's beyond my years. I mean, this might not even be displayed while I'm still alive. But when I pass, I'm giving it to Paris. So I know just like the Mona Lisa is displayed thousands of years later, Michael's going to be displayed. And fans will be appreciative of me that I took such a risk on my own life to get something like that for other people. And I'd never even be able to be thanked by them. Wow. Okay, I got more questions. How long does it take to go from Carlo to Michael, like makeup wise and the transformation. Sure. I would say uh, about an hour to be safe. Okay. Because it depends on what era I'm doing. Sometimes it requires more work than others, but um, yeah, I would say about an hour. Okay. Next question I have is, um, how do you handle the real life controversy of Michael Jackson, like the, the bad press that he gets? Can you tell me a little bit about that? Sure. And thankfully, most of that I don't have to deal with anymore. When I was younger, when he was going through the trial, that was the hardest part. Every day, someone would have something to say about what was happening. And I already went through that. So like now that I have to deal with it, it's not even that bad for me. Um, but people ask me, like, what do you think about this or what's the deal? And I always have a short explanation. I mean, like, all of these people sued Michael in civil court. So they never really even cared what happened to their kid. They just wanted the money. Civil court means even if you're found guilty, you just pay a monetary uh, fine. So if someone raped your child, why would you ask for money? Like, that would seem like the bottom of your list. But it seems the top of the list for all of these people. Um, so I'm not surprised. Uh, and I think this is actually just beginning. There's going to be a lot more people that are going to come out. Now that Michael's not around for them to cash in, this is the only way they can cash in on it. So I think a lot more people are going to come out and claim some type of abuse. And they'll use their personal relationship with him as a reference so they can get paid. All right. um, so I'm not surprised by any of it. I, I want to I segue. I think that, that you answered that very well. And I feel like we got a closure on that particular topic. Um, one of the things about our show is all about, um, you know, once again, we are in a real bank vault 
and the secrets of success live here. And what we're trying to do is extract those secrets for our audience. And I want to know what types of um, secrets to success have you encountered and what can you share with our, uh, our audience? Sure. Now, when I tell you guys this, I hope you use it and you don't just blow it off like anyone else would, uh, including myself. I probably would have blown this off if it didn't come at the right time for me. Um, but one of the biggest keys to my success, proven by far over and over and over again, is that you can have anything you want, anything. Does not matter how crazy it is uh, for you to think. Anyone can have anything, but you have to write it down. So I heard this about Michael, that Michael had uh, written down. He would have the largest selling album of all time, and he would be the biggest celebrity of all time. And he wrote it on his mirror, and he wrote it every day. So when he was in the shower and it steamed up, he would write it over and over again. Well, sure enough, his physical like manifested into reality. Uh, on that end, and he is the largest selling album of all time, uh, number one, two, and three, and he is the biggest celebrity of all time. Uh, no one could ever top that. It's not even possible the way the world works now. Uh, but then I've heard of other people that pulled that same kind of thing, and it came from a, a Tony Robbins quote, uh, as far as making sure you label what you want, and very specific. Don't just be like silly about it. You have to be very specific. So I wrote that I would meet Michael Jackson within a year. Uh, it happened. I met Michael. I didn't even dress up like Michael at the time, but that's the way it manifested. That was the way I got to meet him. Uh, later, many years later, I, I knew that Michael was very good friends with Diana Ross. So I went to one of her shows, and as my goal, the song she brought Michael up many years ago was called Upside Down. So I was like, wow, that would be so crazy if she would bring me up during her show for Upside Down. That was like a dream of mine. So I wrote it down. I said, uh, Diana Ross will bring me up on stage to dance. And then right before I left the show, or where I went to go to the show, I wrote, okay, I need to be more specific. And I said, Diana Ross will dance on stage with me tonight during Upside Down. And I signed it and I dated it. Sure enough, Upside Down came on. She's looking around, she grabs me. I dance on stage with her. And then later on in the show, she's singing another song. And then she motions for me to come up again. So I got up on stage with her twice during her show. And then as soon as I came home, that was the first thing I found is my note that I said, I will dance on stage with Diana Ross tonight, twice. And it happened. Mm -hmm. I could have written it down five times and she would wrap me up. It's crazy how that it works. But if you're a moron and you just blow that off, just kiss it goodbye. It'll never happen. Even if you're just taking it sarcastically. Like I did. I'm like, oh, whatever. Just write it down. Whatever. Hopefully it works. But don't write it down in a negative attitude that it's not going to happen because it won't. It'll never happen. But if you think, shit, whatever, you know, Trump got in office. Why can't I meet someone or like something work out? Mm -hmm. it, it can happen. And it's that crazy. It's a little kid thing. If you told a little kid this, they would fulfill every dream of their life by far because they're the only ones that are open to it. Anyone that I tell that's my age, you know, in their 30s, they just blow it off. They're like, whatever, so I can just have a Ferrari tomorrow. And it's that negative attitude that kills it. So if you really want it, you truly want it, not just for, you know, recognition or you think it's going to bring you something. If you truly want it, it can absolutely happen. Remember, you live on a floating ball that floats in never-ending space. Like for you to ask to make some meeting or make a billion or a trillion dollars, that's nothing. That is nothing for you to ask. That is so basic and rudimentary monkey kind of request because any of that can happen. And I know many people have used the same tool set and it works. So do it. And even if you think I'm a fucking moron, just try it. Just try it. Write it down. And then you'll sooner or not later, you'll find the letter and you'll be like, oh, shit, that worked. And it works good and bad. So don't write anything negative and be extremely specific because something can work out exactly like you want and be horrible for you. Yeah. But do it because you're going to be a dead person before you know it. I promise you. So I agree. I think the power of positive thinking is huge. And like you said, if you can manifest it by actually believing in it, that's so important. And, you know, you starts with you and then other people then start to believe in it and then it becomes true. So I, I'm a big believer in what you just said. And we're very grateful that you came on our show. Uh, last question is where can people find you online? 
Sure. So Almost MJ is my uh, website and then all my stuff online. So Instagram, Facebook, all that. And I'm actually starring in a new documentary that's filming very soon. It's called Mirroring Michael Jackson uh-huh. uh, by an award-winning filmmaker. So it's on IMDb right now, but it'll be uh, set up in there interviewing me on and the other uh, Michaels around the world about uh, what fuels our passion for him, you know, and why we do what we do. Very cool. So it'll be a good combat to the bullshit that's going against him right now. Don't move. Let's bring the iPad over here, unplug it, hand that to me. And then can you guys uh, turn that to camera mode and let's take a picture. All right, this is what we see here in our in-studio. Let's get a good photo of this. Usually what we do is when we're done, our guests usually take a photo with our crew. So we're, we're just doing this for a little posterity. You good? You got it good? Now, if you could also do us a favor, if you're willing to give us a shout out yeah. to say like, hey, this is Carl O'Reilly and I'm a Michael Jackson tribute artist and you're watching The Vault. Yep. Just let me know when you're ready. Action. Hey guys, you guys are watching The Vault and I'm a Michael Jackson tribute artist and I'll do that in reverse. Hey, I am Carl O'Reilly, Michael Jackson tribute artist. And you are watching The Vault. Woo! Oh, wow. Our, our lights even went off. All right, great. Well, it was amazing to interview you. I'm looking forward to uh, talking to you very soon. Uh, just uh, keep going. I mean, keep motivating people with uh, the love of Michael Jackson. And we're very grateful that we had you on the show. And uh, that's it. Thank you. Sounds good, man. Have a good afternoon. Uh, and uh, okay. send me a link if it comes up online. Of course. Bye. Here we are with Michael Jackson. So what was your experience here today? It almost seemed like it was just some tabloid story. I just can't believe that he's actually gone. But seeing the coffin roll out, it just shook me and I was crying almost hysterically. Michael, we love you. We miss you. I just need to let you know that you have impacted so many lives. And I just want to tell you how much you mean to us. You let us know that you loved us. Michael Jackson, I love you. Thank you so much for everything you've done. You literally saved my life. Do you like to be? Are you Michael Jackson every day, or do oh, you no, just dress up? No, 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 just for specific events like this. He says, "I met Michael Jackson in 2007," and he pulls out a little picture from inside his cardigan. March 2007 in Tokyo. Oh my goodness! Wow. Okay. What was that like? What was it? What was? Oh, it was the first dream I ever had that came true. And then he moves forward, and the ceremony starts to begin. He does a few different Michael Jackson signature poses. He does the thriller. <laughs> He does the crotch grab, he does the, the tough fist one.